And joining us now is Eric Farnsworth. He's vice president of the Council of the Americas and the Americas Society. Thank you so much for joining us. We're waiting uh, within the next few hours. President Xi will land in Panama. And a lot has happened in the year and a half since they established diplomatic relations, series of agreements, um, a lot to look forward to on this trip. What will you be looking for? It really seems that China has made Panama uh, almost a base for its forward-leaning and forward-looking operations in Latin America. That makes a certain amount of sense. Panama is strategically located, not just geographically, but also has the canal. China, of course, is the second largest worldwide user of the canal, and this is really important for China's trade economically, but also to have the opportunity to participate in Panamanian development uh, on the logistics side, uh, on the services side. So this is a relationship that I think is growing, uh, and the state visit uh, of uh, Xi Jinping, I think, uh, really validates that view. The uh, Panamanian president in China for a state visit uh, when the embassies opened and uh, not too long ago. Um, talk to us about the potential for a free trade agreement between these two countries, given the global trade climate at the moment. Well, I think it's a tricky question, to be perfectly honest. China's economy is huge. Panama's economy is very small. China's economy is very diverse. Panama's economy is very concentrated on services, uh, in particular, again, the canal and financial services and other things like that. But having said that, the United States and Panama have a bilateral trade agreement, so a large economy can do a bilateral deal with Panama. There is precedent for that. The one thing that I would say, though, is because of that trade agreement between the United States and Panama, we've just seen what the United States has done with Canada and Mexico, and in the new NAFTA has put in a provision uh, really questioning uh, the wisdom, if you want to put it that way, of countries entering into free trade agreements with uh, non-market-based economies. And so one wonders uh, if Panama moves forward with an agreement with China, what that would do with the agreement between, China, between the United States and Panama. Do you see the, the connection there? So there are a lot of different things that are ongoing here. Panama is not just, quote unquote, a Latin American country. Panama is a strategic country that has a long-standing historic relationship with the United States. So there's going to be a lot of people in Washington watching this very closely. And to the extent of free trade agreement negotiation goes forward, I think you're going to hear people in Washington talk about that more and more. Yeah, the Trump administration has been critical of yes. this uh, growing relationship um, with Panama, also with uh, other recent um, countries that China has reestablished relations with in the region, like El Salvador mm -hmm. and others. And the Dominican Republic, yeah. And I don't think anybody questions whether Panama or El Salvador should have relations with China or Taiwan. These are sovereign countries. They should be able to recognize and have relations with whomever they want. The question is, under what terms have those uh, recognitions been granted? Uh, and there are some questions there about transparency and opaqueness, so I think those are some questions people are asking. President Xi, again, visiting the region. He was just in Argentina for the G20, as we saw now here in Panama. Um, you know, for a lot of countries in South America, Latin America, China is now the biggest trading partner. Um, what do you think of, of what you just saw with the G20 and the state visit with um, Xi and Macri? I think that the Chinese uh, government officials at the very senior level do a very good job uh, when they travel to the Western Hemisphere in terms of building the bilateral relations, showing the interest of China in Latin America on the trade and economic side. Uh, they have the pageantry down very, very well. Uh, and so the meetings with President Macri in Argentina, I think, followed that same trajectory. I think we can anticipate that also going forward in Panama. And we've seen this pattern now from uh, for the last several years. And we've talked about this several times right. on this program in the context of you know Chinese senior leaders traveling to the region. It's really important. I mean, people focus on those sorts of issues. It's symbolic, but also uh, the relations are built uh, based on the, symb the symbolism. And once those uh, leaders have a work relationship, then their officials underneath them can really build that out further. So I anticipate that that will continue. Uh, China and Argentina already have a very strong economic relationship and, uh, and a growing political relationship, too. And I think that uh, President Xi's visit to Buenos Aires is going to continue to strengthen that. All right. Uh, Eric Farnsworth, always great to hear your take. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thanks for having me.